We're going to multiply decimals using the standard algorithm, but we're still going to use estimation to help us figure out where our decimal point would go at the end. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is look at these numbers. So if I have 13 and 2 tenths, I'm going to estimate that that's close to 13. And if I have 9 and 8 tenths, I'm going to say that's close to 10. So in the end, when I do 13 times 10, I know my answer is going to be somewhere close to 130. Okay. So when it comes to multiplying decimals using our standard algorithm, I'm going to start by writing these numbers. Now it's important for you to know that when you multiply with decimals, it's just like multiplying whole numbers. Okay? You're going to ignore these decimal points until you get to the very, very end of the problem. Okay? Don't put them as you come through and you find your steps. Don't worry about the decimal till the very end. So if I were doing just a straight multiplication problem here, I would do 8 times 2, which is 16. And then 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And then 8 times 1 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Now, my next step is going to be to multiply the 9. Now remember, in multiplication, when you're using your standard algorithm, since this is not the first digit, we need a placeholder here. So now 9 times 2 is 18. Regroup the 1. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 1 is 28. Then 9 times 1 is 9 plus 2 is 11. And my last step when I do my multiplication standard algorithm is I'm going to add these up. So 6 plus 0 is 6. 8 and 5 is 13. 8 plus 1 is 9. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 1. Okay. So I've multiplied this whole number out. But I need to think about where my decimal goes now. In like Unlike addition and subtraction, it doesn't go right in line with the problem. This is where our estimate can help us. I know I need an answer that's close to 130. So what I want to think about is where can I put my decimal point? If I put it there, that's not close to 130. If I put it here, that's not close to 130. That's just 12. But what if I put my decimal point here? Now I have 129 and 36 hundredths. 129 is close to 130, so that's where my decimal point belongs. Okay? There are four things I want you to keep in mind when you multiply decimals. Number one, you do not line up your decimals. Okay? If you look back here, this problem each had one decimal point value. But if we're doing this problem, one of them has one place and one has two places. We're not going to line them up. You only have to line them up in addition and subtraction. The second thing to keep in mind is that when you multiply, the order doesn't matter. If I do 2 times 3 and get 6, it's the same as doing 3 times 2. So when you're multiplying decimals, the easiest thing to do is to put the number with the most digits on top. So even though this number comes second, when I write my problem, I'm going to put that as my top number. And before I write the second number, I want you to look at this next thing to keep in mind. Do not include extra zeros before or after a number. This zero here, if I multiply it, is just going to give me a whole bunch of zeros. So I don't include it. Okay, so what I have is 1 and 45 hundredths times 9 tenths. I don't line up my decimal points. See how they're not lined up? My number with the more digits is on top and I'm not including extra, any extra zeros. And last but not least, what to keep in mind is we're going to use estimation. So here, if I were going to estimate, 9 tenths is close to 1, and 1 and 45 hundredths is close to 1 and a half. So my estimate here is going to be that. My answer is going to be close to 1 and a half. So let's look at this. So if I have 9 times 5, I get 45. 9 times 6, I'm sorry, 9 times 4 is 36, plus 4 is 40. And 9 times 1 is going to be 9, plus 4 is 13. So my answer has to be close to 1 and a half. If I want to put my decimal point, it's going to go right here. 
because this is 1 and 305 thousandths, which is close to 1 and a half, closer than if I had put my decimal point here, which would give me 13, and closer than if I'd put it here, which doesn't even have a whole number. So again, that estimate really helps you figure out where your decimal point should go.